Hey there, it's Julie. And today I wanted to talk about this what I learned video that is going like wild right now with the vegans. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So a couple of our viewers reached out, wrote to us to let us know that they wanted me to check out this latest video from this channel called What I've Learned. I believe I responded to him a few years ago for making a video kind of like this. Anyway, in this new video of his, he says that these claims that you hear in the media about how eating meat is really bad for our planet, it's bad for greenhouse gas emissions, it's bad for wasting precious water resources. Anyway, he's saying that this information is just vegan propaganda somehow the mainstream media has picked up on. Hey, it's Mike here, and today, eating less meat won't save the planet, according to the YouTube channel What I've Learned, who I've had to respond to several times now. Last time he was like, meat doesn't cause cancer. Of course I had to respond to that. Yeah, I'm gonna comment on that. Okay, so they both said a lot, and I'm kind of debunking, like, stuff from both their videos at the same time, so bear with me here. I'm not gonna be able to cover it all. The first thing I wanna talk about is this cow pee thing. Like, both of them were so uh, kind of like confused or thought it was like hilarious, like talking about the cow pee thing. Now, the vast majority that of water that goes into a beef animal will go into the beef animal in the form of feed, not in the form of water that they drink in the form of feed. And guess what happens to that water a few hours after it's ingested? It's urinated out. It's not staying in the animal. It stays in the animal as long as the tea that you drank this morning stayed into your body. So what is he getting at here? Is he saying if a cow pees onto the ground, and that doesn't really happen when they're in slaughterhouses and factory farming, but when a cow's outdoors and, and pees into the ground, that urination becomes water once again? It's urinated out. It's not staying in the animal. Yes, he just said that. I didn't know whether he was serious, but it appears that, yes, in fact, he does believe that all water that hits a plant is magically imbued into it, and then when it's fed to animals, they're gonna pee it all out. Ryan said, like, he didn't, couldn't find any stats about pee going back into the atmosphere and system, and, um, Mike kind of laughed at the concept and said uh, not all of the water that goes into a plant uh, will end up in the plant in the end, and he's right. Uh, but Mike, you had to read the fine print. If you look at what they're saying here, a lot of the feed that goes to cows is grown primarily with rainwater, okay? So that water goes into the plant, plants drink what they need, any excess goes back into the ground, gets evaporated, goes back into the water cycle. Please don't make me bring out the water cycle. I don't know, when do you learn about the water cycle? Probably like in grade school, right? Like the rest that is left in the plant, even if you let the plant dry out a little, that goes back into the atmosphere. So this is all water that would naturally do these things. Cow then eats the plant and then absorbs the water and pees it back out and the pee gets filtered back into the ground. Most of the cow's life is spent on grass. Pee goes back into the ground, goes back into the water cycle and it continues. Just like a deer in the forest would be peeing back out the water at eight, right? So I'm not quite sure what you guys aren't understanding about this. Maybe you missed that print where it says that we're talking about like not just feed that's grown agriculturally, but also just all of its feed, okay? And a lot of cow food is grass or like byproducts of different industrial things like oil, like seed oil or corn oil. Uh, which is made for biofuel or different oils made for consumption and the rest of it that's left over goes to the cows. Not something humans can eat. Only about 14% of a cow's food is actually edible by humans. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about grass and whatever else they're eating gets peed back out. That's basically like 
free food. Now that we've settled that, let's move on. Let's look at this study from 2020 from University of Michigan's Center for Sustainable Systems. And they say that replacing 50% of all animal-based foods with plant-based alternatives leads to a 224 million metric tons less emissions per year in 2030, a reduction equivalent to the annual emissions of over 47 million of today's average passenger vehicles. Per ton of product, animal products generally have a larger water footprint than crop products. The same is true when we look at the water footprint per calorie. The average water footprint per calorie for beef is 20 times larger than for cereals and starchy foods. I wanna talk about using calories to feed people. So let's just take a ribeye steak. It has about 255 calories and 19 grams of protein, okay? Okay, let's take lentils. So 230 calories of lentils, which is kind of similar to the beef, has a 17.9 gram of protein. So those were kind of equal in calories. And I'm looking at the protein. This is the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. So casein, for example, gets a one. Egg white gets a one and beef gets 0.92 on the PDCAAS. Lentils get a 0.52. So it's kind of like half the digestibility of casein or let's say beef, it's like a little over half the digestibility. So if you're gonna take that 17.9 grams of lentils, you're gonna have to almost double it so now you're gonna be eating about, you know, 400 calories of lentils. And here's the issue, protein is what keeps us satiated. And we need protein, like we're going to just keep eating until we get enough protein. And if you're comparing calories to calories, this is why vegans eat so many calories, is because they can't get the same amount of protein in a piece of meat with lentils without going way over their calories, without eating a ton of calories, like double almost. So to compare calories from animal products to calories from plant foods, that's not really a fair comparison. So going back to that classic Cornell University statistic, yeah, it appears that we're growing enough animal feed in the US to feed every hungry person on the earth in terms of calories, which yes, does matter because it's a difference between these people starving to death or not. <sighs> it is the fact that animals eat way too much of our food supply. Globally, we're talking about up to half of the world's grain. The reason I have issue with this is because in the film by what I learned, they're talking about cows because Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most proponents of animal foods are more likely to say that we should be eating ruminant animals like cows and large ruminant animals, I would say, as opposed to chickens and pigs. And when you quote something like that, you're saying that all this feed is going towards the animals when cows don't actually receive that much feed. They receive about 14% of what they eat is edible to humans. And that's kind of at the end of their life usually when they're at the feedlot trying to fatten up before slaughter. We want more ruminant animals because they make the most sense. They take something like grass that humans can't eat and upcycle it and turn it into protein that humans can't eat. And on land that 
may or may not be usable by agriculture. Not all animal products are sustainable and that's why most of us focus on ruminant animals. Actually, in the study cited by Ryan, Happy Healthy Vegan, of the University of Michigan, the Center for Sustainable Systems, it says that red meat, since 1970, red meat has declined 30% while chicken has increased steadily. So we're eating more chicken and and pork and stuff like that and less red meat because that's what you know the food guidelines are telling us to do and so that is a problem and in the 1970s our emissions were much lower than now and yet we ate more red meat back then so the issue is actually we're probably eating too much chicken and pork and not enough red meat if we made that switch back and use regenerative practices more often it would help well mike kind of brushes over and ryan doesn't even go to the end of the video but they brush over the important part about food waste speaking of methane plenty of things emit methane one big source of methane is the organic matter decomposing in landfills. What's that in the landfills? Wasted food. This is about six tons of food waste. They'll get 30 deliveries just like this one every single day. When it comes to food, there's something much more worth talking about than meat. One third of all the food produced in the world ends up wasted. The FAO says that if food wastage were a country, it would be the third largest emitting country in the world. Food gets wasted for different reasons. In developed countries, waste mostly happens at the retailer and consumer end. In the United States, 40% of all food does not get eaten. Now, another thing in that study that calculated the emission reduction of everyone going plant-based didn't take into account was food waste. This is important because what is getting wasted? Meat and dairy makes up 14% of our food waste but the non-animal foods make up the majority of our food waste. Fruits and vegetables make up 42%, cereal grains including bread and rice make up 22%, and roots and tubers like potatoes make up 18% of our food waste, meaning non-animal foods make up 82% of our food waste. People don't tend to waste their animal foods. So we're producing tons and tons and tons of plants that are just kind of going to waste and that's creating emissions in the dumps. And that's an important part of the video that neither of them really commented on. I'd be interested to hear what they have to say about that. Lastly, I think both of them spent a little bit too much time trying to debunk the credibility of the professor who was interviewed and not enough time actually trying to figure out why their studies and the studies he cited don't match up. To discuss this, I'm joined here with Professor of Animal Science and Air Quality Specialist at UC Davis, Dr. Frank Mitlerner. All right, so fair enough. He enlisted the help of this expert, Professor Mitlener. So I went to the UC Davis website to see what he's all about, to see if he's an environmental ecologist or something like that. No, he works in the Department of Animal Science. And I'm not gonna hold that against him, but I'm gonna look at his, his educational background. He, his undergraduate work was in Germany in animal science, PhD, Texas in animal science. And he's received funding from the animal agriculture businesses, such as the Pork Board and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. In order to cover these points, he interviews a animal sciences guy as his expert and, you know, he claims that he's neutral, but we're gonna let you decide on that. I didn't look into all of their studies and where they came from. I just looked into one and it became very fruitful, actually. I looked into the University of Michigan website that Ryan mentions in his video, and they do suggest eating less meat. In fact, quote from the website, it says meat-based diets use more energy to produce than vegetarian diets. One study suggests twice as much. So I looked into that one study that suggests twice as much. And I noticed that two of the authors, they were both involved in that study. They both work for the Center for Sustainable Systems at the University of Michigan, but they're both involved in a project with Beyond Meat. And they both uh, were in a study, a comprehensive comparison of plant-based and animal-based protein sources, Beyond Meat's Beyond Burger Life Cycle Assessment. Yeah, so I think 
it's best to maybe focus more on actually proving the points from the video wrong than trying to take credibility away from someone who's devoted a lot of time learning about this stuff, biased or not. Uh, you kind of got to listen to what people say. And that being said, if you're going to try to convince me that vegans aren't biased, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in another one.